It is Saturday, June 11th, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Welcome. Yesterday, we began looking at Psalm 19 and looked at the first six verses. Today, verses 7 through 14 are before us. Yesterday, we heard about how creation sings the praises of God by being creation. Uh, today, we turn our attention a little bit more to how that involves us. In a common theme from the Psalms, now the psalmist sings about the law of the Lord, which we have said before is not proscriptions and prescriptions, but instead the very word of the Lord, uh, the instruction of God, the, the wisdom of God, the presence of God, and for us as Christians, the word made flesh dwelling among us, Jesus himself. The psalmist starts out these verses by saying, the law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. Now, there's a poetry going on here that we should notice. When it says the law of the Lord is perfect, the decrees of the Lord are sure, the precepts of the Lord are right, it's not talking about three different things. This is poetic parallelism where the law, the decrees, and the precepts all point to the same thing. The word of God, the instruction of God, the wisdom of God imparted to us is perfect, it is sure, it is right, it is clear, and it enlightens our eyes. It endures forever. These are the things that we grab onto as we think about how we praise the Lord. God has spoken to us, and the words that God speaks to us, whether it be through Scripture or the love given through the community of Christ and one another, whether it be in our encounter with that creation that keeps singing, well, all of that is constant and true. It's perfect, sure, right, clear, pure. It's dependable. The psalmist then says, more to be desired are all of these things than gold, even much fine gold. It's sweeter than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. I stop there because I wonder in this world that we inhabit, whether we believe that for a minute, that God's word and God's wisdom is more to be desired than gold. We like gold. We like shiny things. We like material things. We like all the objects of this world. We work our whole lives, our fingers to the bone and our backs to aching, to accumulate all of the gold this world can offer, all the things that we can have. And yet the psalmist sings that if we are to praise God as all creation does, then we will value God's word and God's instruction more than any other thing in the world. The psalmist says then, moreover, by all of these things, your word, your law, your decrees, your statutes, your wisdom, all of those things, well, your servant is warned. There's a warning here. That first, in keeping all of these things, there is great reward, but also the implication is there is great error if we do not. So what am I supposed to do? Well, the end of this psalm, which is a very familiar prayer in the church and especially among preachers, is let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. In other words, turn me to you, Lord, and away from all other things. Embrace me with your word so I can embrace it back. We sing the praises of God when we turn to his instruction and his word and his grace and his mercy 
instead of the things of this world that distract us, take us off course, lie to us. So, indeed, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable. Let us pray. Faithful God, you sent your incarnate word as the sun of justice to shine upon all the world. Open our eyes to see your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. For the sake of him through whom all things were made, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.